Toño. Hey everybody, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, and this is another episode of The Next Level in which I have a guest co-host, and together we discuss the most recent interview of the week and help translate um, them into some specific tactical strategies for you to use to bring your own business to the next level. And so today's guest co-host is none other than Lewis Miller of Lewis Miller Design, floral designer based in New York City. Lewis's clients include the world's leading industry professionals in fashion, design, photography, art direction, and architecture. Lewis, it is so good to have you on the show. Thank you for uh, doing this. Thank you, Andy, for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Well, and I definitely want to have you on. I want to interview you, uh, you know, as a regular interview. So we're going to do that sometime in the next <laughs> couple of months. Anytime. Yeah. And, and you, know, you know, I want to recognize, you know, before uh, we get into this, that this is, uh, we're recording this on March 26th. So we're still, I think, kind of in the shock period about this whole coronavirus thing. And, you know, I just want to recognize that. And I think as we talk about this, we might even there might be some things that relate. So I think it's fine for us to discuss this. And in, in the future, when we look back on this, you know, when we all have our moments of dealing with a crisis, I think that's a lot of what we talk about can apply. Yeah, absolutely. Well, today's guest who we're going to talk about is Sophia Crocus, planner and designer based in New York City, who has also partnered with the Heritage Collection behind four exclusive private properties in Europe. Sophia really gets vulnerable in this and, and shares who she is and what's important to her. So I urge all of you to listen to the actual interview if you haven't already heard it. So, Louis, I, you know, one of the first things that really grabbed my attention was her talk about having a mentor and how uh, if she hadn't had that mentor, who knows where she'd be today, you know, because this person opened up her entire business to her and eventually handed weddings over to her. And, um, you know, I love how Sophia talked about that and how when helping somebody, you're helping and healing yourself and, and get, and so I think she's starting to mentor people. Have you been through that kind of experience? Did you have anyone in your life who did that? I mean, I listened to that, her story and I felt a little bit of jealousy because I haven't actually, I have definitely have people in my life that I look to over the years and still do for guidance on things. Um, have I had a sort of you know, soul mentor? No, I've always sort of approached things a little bit like a bull in a china closet, and just did things, um, yeah. maybe not necessarily thinking things through, but um, I'm very action oriented. So no, I have not in that respect. I have a group of mentors at this point, And I definitely have people who I seek counsel from and have over the years. Yeah. It's funny. I, I got my first mentor who I'd call a mentor when I was 18. And I have had I'm decades older than that now. <laughs> and I've had mentors the entire time. I would say right now, yeah, I have like at least two, uh, maybe three. So I, I think it's a, you know, at, at any level, we can always get some help, don't you think? I mean, oh, absolutely. Do you mentor anyone yourself? I think by default, yes. I don't use the word as, you know, as a, as a blanket label. But there are definitely people in my life, young designers, people who have either worked for me or have not worked for me, who I am an open book. And if they need help, um, I'm there for them because I think it's crucial, especially in this day and age. It's, it's a tough world and you have to get a break and you have to get a start. So anywhere you can you know, share the wisdom, share from your own mistakes, um, I think it's sort of the least I can do. Yeah, I love that. You know, also, she was talking a lot about how, I like how she framed it, she lives by connection, you know, and she was connecting with people and clients. And she was saying that if she doesn't connect with them, she's not going to do it. And I've heard that from so many people on the show, which, you know, maybe for some listening, especially new people, it would take a lot of courage to not work with somebody. But I think in the end, you know, she talked about how, how did she say it? She said, you attract who you are and what you put out. You know, it brings that alignment. And I, I totally agree. Do you, how do you feel about that? I agree with that as well. I think that's best case scenario. I mean, I'm going to be um, a little more, you know, step out on a limb here and say that I still have to run a business and make payroll and, um, yeah. you know, pay rent. So is it always a warm and fuzzy connection? Sometimes it's not, but a lot of times in my, um, sector of the industry, being the design and floral part, there are other players involved. So if you're working with a planner or somebody that recommends you and mm -hmm. like any relationship, you know, you can't figure it out 
in the first meeting. It takes time. And yeah, it's like dating. It's like dating. And I think yeah. that it requires vulnerability. I think it requires a sense of humor. I think it requires not thinking things too seriously. And it certainly requires not having an ego and, and shoving your pride off to the side. So, yeah, you know, I think that's, I'm a pretty adaptable person person. It's the Gemini nature in me. So I like working with all types. Uh And if somebody doesn't necessarily get me or warm up to me or vice versa, I don't find that to be a problem. I kind of take it as a challenge and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to conquer this. God, it's interesting you say that because, you know, on one hand, I like the idea, you know, I've got music and entertainment company. And so I, you know, I need to, let's put it this way. I don't have to totally connect in my situation, but the more that I do, the better personalized, custom curated, high touch job I can do for a client. I have so many stories when I hit it off with somebody and it just transforms with the experience what it can be. No, I agree completely. Like if there's no connection in the first meeting, then the relationship, the partnership, the collaboration is not going to move forward. Easy as that. It is like dating. But you're not going to get perfect trust and perfect um, simpatico relationship right away. It takes it takes time because there is a lot there's a lot of things at stake for both parties. So you have to approach it with a sense of humor. You have to approach it, you know, with an open mind because people are very in my in mm-hmm. my sector. People are very, um, you know, you're dealing with something that's very personal and it's very uh, subjective. So you have to really kind of figure out, navigate the waters a little bit to know what you're getting into. I totally agree with that. And, but again, overall, it makes the process easier. You know, many of our past guests, including Brian Raffinelli, CeCe Johnson, Colin Cowie, and Lynn Easton, all use Party Slate to showcase their event work and build their businesses. And if you're not familiar with Party Slate, it's a website that inspires people planning events and connects them with the leading event professionals and venues across the country and the world. This is a really, really great website. You can sign up for a free profile where you can upload unlimited photos and events, or you can explore one of their membership options for even more exposure. And Party Slate has launched in 11 cities so far, including Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, Dallas, and Miami, and they are coming to a city near you soon. Visit PartySlate.com to learn more. Again, you really got to check out PartySlate.com. She talked about, and this is really quite ironic with what's going on with us dealing with the impact of the virus. She talked about how important it was for her to take time to disconnect from the business, you know, and, and she had decided to delegate more. She needed to, I love how she said this. She said, I needed to disconnect in order to reconnect. You know, you mentioned before we hit the record button, you have like a country home or something you're going to be going to now. Is that right? And we're kind of forced into this break right now. Yeah, we are right now. And, you know, I, I've been up here now going on the second week and it's sort of, I jokingly call it the weekend that (laughs) won't end. Right. I mean, I love my industry. I love my job. My job and my is my, my life and my my work. There's not a real clear separation of church and state there. Yeah, and I don't need a lot to recharge. A couple of days, a weekend, and I'm very yeah. ready to go again. I don't do well with downtime, and when I do have downtime, I'm always doing something that just motivates me. I'd like, it's sort of all roads end up leading back to the business. <laughs> I've said over the past couple of years that I do want to, I would love to just take a month off and see what happens, but um, <laughs> here you go. And yeah, here I am. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, but I said that a couple of years ago and then I realized that that, that I was just kind of saying that because I right. heard other people say that, yeah. but it wasn't true for me. <laughs> I'm fine with three days. You know, I, I like, so yeah, I get it. But I'm just sort of a creature who needs to constantly be busy. And it's that motion that kind of drives me, makes me thrive and keeps me energized. Yeah, this is an interesting situation. You know, I've told the story on the show where it was my own choice. I had taken off a couple five week trips like I really wanted to challenge myself. And the first one, I barely worked at all. I had people working for me and I delegated quite a bit. And um, that's a whole nother story. But 
I was scared out of my mind. I went to Maui, basically. A cousin of mine had a vacation home. She let me use it by myself. I didn't know anyone. And it was really, it was such an interesting experience. It was very challenging. Like what you're talking about, I can be alone for a few days, no problem. Really enjoy it. But then day after day, week after week, and I found myself starting to be more outgoing because I had no choice. You know, I would go to restaurants and I would talk to people near me and I would be on hiking paths and we would stop. And long story short, some people know the story. I started another podcast and that's what led to the wedding biz was I was interviewing people on the island and I ended up creating this community of, of some friends, like maybe I would say one or two really good friends, you know, cause it goes quicker when you're on an island and you're in that kind of a zone. And, and then I went back again some months later for another five weeks and I learned so much. It's like Sophia talked about, you know, she said that she needed to be alone too and have that challenge. And she found out so much about herself. And I would say that process is a a little bit painful, but in the end, it's really incredibly illuminating. And I had all kinds of epiphanies about my music business, the podcast, different things became more important to me, you know, relationships, nature, and it fed the business. You know what I mean? Yeah. I haven't had that opportunity. You know, it's like, I think I would enjoy a sabbatical of sorts, but it's not, it's not a, it's not something where I can just step away from my business and staff and clients and take that on and not have certain, I would, that that to me would be more stressful than just showing up to work every day. Well, yeah, believe me, it wasn't easy. (laughs) That was a whole nother story. So, you know, being a, being in a forced time out right now, you know, even though it's been a couple of weeks or not even two weeks yet, it definitely, some of the things you just said, I can sense that that's happening or going to happen. Yeah. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. And I think that it does make sort of the, it settles, settles things a bit in your mind and you have to realize what's important and what was just kind of ego driven that really was not satisfying. That's a really good point. I love that. Yeah. It's a chance to reset. You know, we're all talking so much about there is an opportunity here. And look, again, there's a lot of suffering going on. There's a lot of fear, you know, especially if it's financial. So I'm not knocking any of that. But I do believe that if we can, through meditation, through whatever it is, take walks, get to a point where an ask, let's not all of it, but where we can embrace the opportunity to slow down and think again about what, of our, what are our dreams? You know, what do we really, are we really happy doing what we want to do right now? It's, it, this is a chance. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. That's all I can say, you know? Yeah. And I think we have to seize the opportunity because I don't think it's going to be, I truly believe we're not going to exit this crisis and have it be the same world that we left. Yeah. So bring it on. You know, I'm in the design business. So to me, creativity has always been about problem solving. Mm. I think it's so essential to be adaptable and be super flexible and throw everything, you know, out the window if need be. Yeah. And I also think that in this situation, because we're all in it together, it's really a great time to be fearless and take a chance and not worry about what anybody thinks and however that manifests itself you know, as it will, because right now we're just what, 12 days into this. So there's just, you know, we don't know, That's right. we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it raises a lot of questions. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. Well, you know, we're about to run out of time. I really appreciate you getting on Lewis and especially in this time, you know, I, I think people need to hear what those of us who have been in the business for a very long time are thinking about this because We're all together. This is not an individual business challenge. This is every one of us. You know, we're all, whether you're new or not, we're all experiencing this and figuring this out at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure that everyone is aware how to find more information on Lewis, his website, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lewis, but lewismillerdesign.com again. Yep. Yep. And that's L-E-W-I-S, lewismillerdesign.com. And your social media handle is the same, Lewis Miller Design. That's it. Yeah. Instagram. Okay. And for Sophia, it is sophiacrocus.com. And her social media handles are uh, Sophia Crocus Events. All of this is in the show notes at theweddingbiz.com. You could all go there. Please also follow The Wedding Biz, especially on Instagram at The Wedding Biz. 
And if you enjoyed this, share this with your friends and colleagues. I'm going to continue to kind of mix up episodes. I'm going to put out regular interviews and the next level, as well as special episodes all about dealing with the impact of the coronavirus from different professionals in the business. And also want to thank our sponsor, and that is Party Slate. You could find them at partyslate.com. And we'll catch you next time on The Wedding Biz. 